Okay, hi everyone. Um, with uh, just a few days to go to Core 3, I guess for many of you, your last two A-level maths exams are Core 3 and Core 4 next week, um, I, th I thought it might be a good time to do some top tips for uh, the Core 3 exam. Uh, what are the things, just kind of little things that might really help you. So here are Maths Dave's seven kind of brief top tips. We're going to start with a, an integration thing. So um, the first one is remember the difference between when you come to do your integration, the integral of ax plus b to the n and the integral of ax plus b to the power of minus 1. <coughs> of course, the top one goes to um, 1 over a m plus 1 ax plus b to the m plus 1 plus c, but that is only true so long as n isn't equal to minus 1. The second one we get, um, that's 1 over ax plus b, isn't it? So we get 1 over a ln ax plus b as our integral plus c. Um, the, the, way, the thing that you're going to spot with this is quite often the exam board are more or less sneaky. So sometimes they're quite obvious with it. Um, the first question in 2013, for example, was a two-part question for five marks. The first part was integrate that, and part two was integrate the same linear expression, but with a power of minus one. So they're looking to catch people out. They're looking for students who either treat both of them as being natural log stuff, or who try and add one to the power in both cases and get mixed up with it. Another place to look out for it is uh, it's quite an easy thing to do when you're doing volumes of revolution. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you know, imagine. Um, your function that you're dealing with is a function like 1 over, well, 1 over 4 minus 3x. And in part 1, you're finding an area under the curve, so you're integrating it. In part 2, you might be finding a volume of revolution. And so you're integrating pi times y squared dx. The problem is that people remember to do natural log in this one, but forget that this doesn't involve a natural log. There we go. So that's that's it. Watch out for your minus 1 as your power in your linear function. That is top tip number 1. Number 2. Ah, oh, the excitement. Um, uh, iteration. Quick one, this one. But when you're doing those uh, those iteration questions, it's all very well to type the number into your calculator. You know, get it all to do that stuff. Throw out all the separate iterates as you go through the process. Write them all down. But then you must give the final answer. OK, so not just leave it as the final step. So, you know, for example, you ah, oh, I should have made a question up here. But x1 could be 2, x2 is 2.13, x3 is 2.146, x4 is 2.1. Four, six, eight. X five is two point one four six nine. The question is telling you to give it to three decimal places. Um, that what you mustn't do is you, you don't just underline that as your final answer, or you know you don't write x six is two point one four seven. Final answer like that. What you what you should do, you might get away with underlining it, but what you should do is say therefore x or alpha or whatever they're calling the root, x equals 2.147. Okay, it's really important that you separately, clearly, say what your final answer is. Number three. Top tip number three is quite a simple one, really, really quick one. Learn the trig identities. Okay. Um, no, uh, no excuse for this one. Get them learnt. You, you know the trig identities. Um, you've got the list of them. Work through that. Top tip number four. Quotient rule. OK, top tip number four. Uh, for the quotient rule, remember the minus sign. And that is more important than anything else. Um, to remember that minus sign in there. So you're going to have uh, v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. 
get that minus sign in there. And, and importantly, if you're doing a question where you've got brackets in there, remember if your uh, expression then involves you doing something like that, remember the minus sign is applying to everything inside the bracket. Um, you'll get away with getting those the wrong way around. You'll, you'll still get a method mark, but if you forget the minus sign altogether, then you won't get anything at all for that bit. So the minus sign is really important. Uh, top tip number five is domain and range. And the important thing is to make sure that you use the correct letter. So if we're talking about a domain of a function, then it's x is greater than or something, or you know, it's defined in terms of x. If we're talking about range, then we're talking about either a y or a f of x as being how you define your domain, your your range. Oh, sorry. Um, if we if we flip it around, if we talk about the inverse, then the domain of the inverse function. Now this is really important because the domain of the inverse is of course the same as the range of the original function. But if this function has a range of f of x greater than or equal to 2, it's x greater than or equal to 2 that would be the domain of the inverse. Notice how the domain must be specified in terms of x. And the range of the inverse, remember the, the range of the inverse is the same as the domain of the original, but it's a range we're talking about so it's the inverse function is bigger than 3 or what, you know, whatever the domain or range was. Um, or you can write it in terms of y. That's top tier number 5. Number 6, um, Simpson's rule. This is a, a, another really common one that we get from Core 2 about people forgetting brackets. So you know when you're doing uh, trapezium rule, you must remember the brackets. So when you're doing the Simpson's rule, um, it, it, you've got to have... I've just forgotten what Simpson's rule is. A third h, and then you have um, y0 plus yn, and then you have your, your brackets in there. So you've got your, oh, I should have got a formula book. I can't remember Simpson's rule. That is shocking, isn't it? Anyway, you, you've got your two bracket. And this bracket here, and all the rest of the stuff is in there, and then the, the four times the other stuff. And Anyway, all of the stuff that's in there, you must have the brackets in there. Um, if the brackets are absent, then you you know a little bit you get away with. Uh, as long as your right answer is correct, you get away with it. But if the brackets are absent and then you make a mistake, you're not going to get any method marks at all. So it's really important that you just take the time to write it out clearly. Put all the brackets in there. Sorry if I've forgotten what Simpson's rule was there. Um, number seven. <coughs> um, volumes of revolution. And if you're asked to find a volume, well, you know, again, learn what you're supposed to do with this. This is the integral of pi y squared dx. Don't forget pi. Don't forget to square your function when you do it. It's a quick one, but it's easily done to forget those things. And and if you're going to take pi out, you know, some people would uh, would get pi out of the way as they're doing the working out and, and write that. If you're going to do that, don't lose pi. Don't forget it's there remember that you've got to multiply by it at the end and certainly leave pi in your final answer and expect to write your answer in terms of pi. Expect to write it in an exact form. Bonus number eight, last thing. Um, and this should be, by the time you've done two years of maths on your way to core three, this should be something that you all know. But if you're talking about a shift, if you're talking about moving things around, the only acceptable word is the word translation. You have to use the word translation. You can't talk about a shift or a move. It's got to be translation. You can write it in terms of a vector. Must use the word translation. And similarly, if you're talking about um, a, 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 you know, a stretch, you use the word stretch, but there aren't so many options for that one. That's the important thing. Don't write shift. Don't write move. Write translation. That's all I can think of. There's much more to learn in Core 3. Um, I'll try and put one of these together for Core 4 as well. Good luck with the exam. Oh, and that's maths.